Did you know? Sepp Blatter, the president of FIFA at the time, stated that the decision to choose Qatar to host the World Cup was a mistake. Mistake? What do you mean mistake? I don't care. We don't care. Let's play soccer. Go! On November 20th, Qatar is ready to face Ecuador in the opening match of the 2022 FIFA World Cup at the Al Bayt Stadium. However, the competition has already drawn significant media attention in the Middle East because Qatar is the first Arab nation to organize it. Officials of the competition created a meticulous strategy to smooth the tournament's entrance after FIFA decided to give Qatar host status in 2010. This plan placed a lot of international emphasis on the local regulations that supporters from all over the world will have to abide by while they are there. Before the election, laws regarding alcohol, sex, the COVID-19 quarantine, and LGBTQ rights will all be tightly enforced. There is a lot more to this story, let's explore, but make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon for more. Let's rewind. Five years after FIFA granted Qatar the 2022 World Cup, the thought of the largest football event in the world taking place in the tiny Gulf state is more probable than ever. In 2010, it seemed nearly hard to believe. Recently FIFA revealed that its task force had chosen an atypical November-December timetable for the event to best avoid Qatar's oppressive summer heat, despite a series of scandals connected to the bid and an outcry over the host country's human rights record. Keeping track of all the reasons football fans are so opposed to the event has at times been a difficult challenge. The dates as a potential issue. A winter tournament is possibly one of the least offensive features of the Qatar World Cup, despite media uproar. The absence of the summer sing-along atmosphere with tops off and beers in hand that often surrounds the tournament may disappoint England fans, but the fact that it will take place in November or December is probably the only thing that will make it problematic for domestic football in Europe. Some would argue that it is only fair for Europe's leagues to have their turn after many other leagues around the world have to change their schedules or sacrifice players for a Summer World Cup. But it's important to keep in mind that most of the players that make the tournament so memorable for spectators and so profitable for FIFA are from Europe's top leagues. Winning the bid, Qatar was awarded the chance to host a summertime-only competition. Voting was conducted and bids were created for an event that was planned for June through July. Winter hosting was not mentioned in Qatar's proposal to host the tournament. No, this is how it truly suggested battling the sweltering heat, each of the five stadiums will employ solar energy to generate electricity, which will be used to cool the players and spectators within the stadiums, to harness the strength of the sun's beams. The solar energy systems at the stadiums will export electricity onto the electrical grid while no games are being played. While larger countries, such as the United States and Australia, which both bid for the 2022 World Cup, offer more sightseeing and often more resources, Qatar's small size has its own advantages for competing teams. The majority of the 12 venues are in or close to Doha, the country's largest city. And the entire country is no bigger than Rhode Island and Connecticut combined. As a result, competing teams will have to travel far less than would have been expected in most other countries. That may be slightly boring for fans, but it will be far less of a burden for players. Despite the fact that fans, federations, and the press may be congested, matches should benefit from replenished players who will have no trips away from the eastern side of the micronation and very little distance to cover anyway. Apparently, Qatar spent $200 million in public funds on their 2022 World Cup bid, any private funds spent are simply hard to trace. In comparison, Australia spent only $42.7 million on its bid, while the United States spent less than $5 million. England allocated $24 million to the process in its 2018 bid, which was widely criticized as excessive. What's fascinating about Qatar's winning bid is how convincing it was. After the first round of voting, Qatar had more supporters than its three rivals combined, and as Australia, Japan, and South Korea were eliminated from the ballot in quick succession, Qatar continued to gain votes. The United States was defeated 14-8 in the end. It wasn't even close and given the lengths Qatar went to secure the World Cup, which executive committee members may have interpreted as the event's importance to them, the margin of victory is hardly surprising. Qatar, the world's richest country, flexed its muscles. Obviously, it's making a high amount of money from this World Cup, more than $1.6 billion.
Laws in World Cup for Visitors International governments have made explicit recommendations for sports fans traveling to Qatar, with particular advice in place to underline potential cultural and legal differences. For instance, official counsel from the U.S. government gives USMNT supporters a rundown of what to avoid in Qatar to prevent a potential crime, including hard advice on drug usage, bringing in prohibited items, drinking alcohol, and clothing code. Alcohol and drinking. Before the competition, local authorities faced concerns about how Qatar would balance its regulations on alcohol sales and usage. Because Qatar is an Islamic nation, local laws and traditions reflect this fact, and officials frequently remind spectators to follow the law and take care to avoid offending anyone. There are stringent rules against bringing alcohol into the country and becoming intoxicated in public places, and regulations regarding visitors only being able to consume alcohol in licensed hotels, pubs, and restaurants will remain in effect. Match ticket holders for World Cup events will be permitted to buy and consume alcohol in certain areas inside the stadium's perimeter before and after games. The inhumane treatment of workers. Despite promising to build 12 gleaming new stadiums in time for the competition, Qatar's ambitious development plans come at a depressingly high human cost. Before the 2022 World Cup begins, the International Trade Union Confederation predicts that up to 4,000 foreign construction workers will pass away. The country of Qatar has promised new legislation based on employment contracts in response to criticism of its kafala labor system, which calls for immigrant workers to have an in-country sponsor responsible for their legal status. However, the extent of the reforms to what has been called modern-day slavery is still unknown. While the match is being played don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. The attitude towards LGBTQ rights. In Qatar, engaging in same-sex sexual behavior is strictly prohibited and punishable by up to seven years in prison or, in the case of Muslims, by the death penalty. A medical test to identify and deter foreign gays from entering the nation was reportedly being developed by Qatar and other Gulf cooperation countries like Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates in 2013. But do not worry. That is exactly what Qatar officially states. The issue of LGBTQ players or fans traveling to the competition would be addressed in innovative ways, according to Qatar's Minister of Sports Salah bin Ghanem bin Nasser Al Ali. Let's wait for the innovative ways. The selfishness and death of humanity. To draw attention to Qatar's treatment of migrant workers and its human rights record, which has been under scrutiny since it was chosen to host the 2022 World Cup, football players are conducting on-field protests during the tournament's qualifying matches. According to a media source, from earlier this month, since Qatar was given the hosting rights for the 2022 competition, 6,500 migrant laborers from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka have perished there. Qatar responded by saying that the immortality rate among these localities is within the expected range for the size and demography of the population. Additionally, there have been demonstrations against unfavorable working conditions, particularly in the summer when temperatures frequently exceed 40 C, 104 F, wage abuse, including on the site of a World Cup stadium, and the lack of rights for migrant workers, who make up about 95% of Qatar's workforce. Are we approving human rights violation? Workers are frequently housed in cramped, filthy, and dangerous conditions. In rooms with eight or more people, we saw men sleeping on bunk beds, However, Qatari law and the workers' welfare standards limit the number of beds per room to four and prohibit bed sharing and the use of bunk beds. Not only that, but recruitment agents also make false promises about the salary and type of job available. One worker was promised a monthly salary of 300 US dollars in Nepal, but this was reduced to 190 US dollars once he arrived in Qatar. You would be shocked to know, when employees complain about their working conditions or seek assistance, their employers frequently intimidate and threaten them. One migrant worker on Khalifa Stadium told us. I went to the company office, telling the manager, I wanted to go home because my pay is always late. The manager yelled at me, keep working or you'll never leave. The company has my passport. They will send me back if my sponsorship status changes and I have a lot of debt to pay, I want my passport back. And, the camp is terrible. There are eight of us in one room, which is far too many. However, I cannot complain. Can you imagine the amount of violence against humanity just for the sake of money and prominence? The irony is that we are allowing this to happen.
the COVID measures. On October 26, Qatar declared that it would update its national COVID-19 regulations in time for the competition. Visitors are no longer required to show negative test results to gain access for the most recent regulations. The need that guests to download the official Eteras contact tracing app on a digital device before departing their lodging has also been removed by the Qatari government. Previously, most public places needed visitors to show their vaccination status via the Eteras app to enter, with access possibly being limited to some venues. From this point on, only access to medical facilities will require the app. The most recent announcement removed the obligation to wear face masks on the metro, making it illegal to wear a mask in public locations. Nowadays, only some offices and healthcare institutions still require cover. To sum up. So, obviously, money rules the world. First and foremost, there is FIFA, which is a multi-billion dollar corporation that awarded Qatar the World Cup in 2022. Most likely because they received more money from Qatar than other countries. Then there are the national football associations, which decide to participate in this tournament because of the enormous high prize money that FIFA pays. Also, you will find players who play for the sake of fame. All of this takes place in a country that violates human rights. At the end of the day, we still live in a world where selfishness dominates our life choices, sometimes at the expense of others, even to the death of others. That said, money wins, it's just like acting blinded and not addressing the truth of this entire situation. What do you think about this? Comment down. Share this video with all FIFA lovers. Stay tuned for more.